Welcome, friends, to Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter. We bring you the greatest female voices in the music industry, from the artists, songwriters, and producers, to managers and executives, and all the women who make the music industry what it is today. Thank you for joining us. Hello and welcome to another episode of Crazy Women Country. I am Paula and today we have Sierra Marie with us. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. Thank you very much. So our first question is always the hardest question. So please tell us who is Sierra Marie? Oh gosh, uh, how much time do you have, Paula? <laughs> <laughs> as much time as you like. We can sit here and just have fun. <laughs> Um, well, I'm a singer, songwriter, visual artist, um, mother, sister, friend, all of all of the above. Um, and I've I've been involved in music for over 40 years. Uh, I've taken a few breaks, you know, with uh, had some kids and some businesses, and but music still always was there. I always was writing music, mm -hmm. and then in um, funny enough, right before COVID. I really started to get more serious about the songwriting. I um, a new little radio station had opened up in our little town, and I gave them one of my songs, and they played it, and they said, you know, if you bring any more songs, we'll play them. And so that just really kind of got me excited about um, getting more serious about songwriting and um, getting my music out to the world. So that's kind of what I've been doing the last four years. Awesome, awesome. So. I read on your website you've been in the business for 40 years, but you must have seen some huge changes over that time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, back in my time, I made a demo tape, you know, did went into the studio, like, had, like, because we were had a young family, you know, it wasn't a ton of money for extra, mm. you know, hobbies and stuff and it was kind of a hobby back then and you know you make a demo tape and then it's like where do you send it you send it to these record companies with a and r reps and you know and, and now i realize of course my songs probably weren't there yet yeah. yeah you know but you don't know that at the time you're just going through the motions and and stuff like that so that's it was really hard to get somebody to pay attention to your music yeah. i was really lucky um I started out in a rock band when I was just a teenager. Then I switched to country music. And that's when I started writing music. And um, I would interject my own songs into the set list. Yeah. You know, we'd play, we'd play live dances. And people would get up and dance. And I was like, wow, they don't even know this is my song. But, you know, there was a reaction. And, and yeah. again, that was, again, sort of the start of thinking, oh, maybe you could do this. You could be a songwriter. Um, and now, um, when you release music, at least I know it's it's switched now because millions of people can release music. Yeah. But at least I can say, yeah, I'm on Spotify, or yeah, I'm on YouTube or yeah. Amazon. You know, at least there's a, a an avenue for us. Yeah, yeah. There's there's so many different places now that you can pick up music from. Where obviously. You know, back in the 80s, we didn't have so much of this here. It was all sort of, if it wasn't through a record label or CDs or cassettes, you know. Absolutely. I'm showing my age there. I'm showing my age with cassettes. <laughs> yeah, me too. We won't talk about eight tracks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not, I don't think I'm old enough for eight tracks just yet, but you never know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so back in August, 23, you released the single Feels Like Home in a Small Town. Tell us about that. Um, that's kind of my second song about, excuse me, being from a small town. I wrote Small Town Prayer. Um, that was a song dedicated to my parents um, who were farmers. I grew up on a, on a farm by a small town. And mm -hmm. then so that kind of same storyline will, you know, pop up again. So this one, because has been travel around a lot in very small towns. Yeah. I remember I was out and people were out on the porch. They didn't know me, but it's like you kind of know everybody, even though you don't know people in a small town. You feel like you do. Yeah. Because yeah. 
same mindset. You know, people are pretty friendly. Um, everybody, you know, every small town has their rodeo, which I talk about in the song. And um, yeah, it just feels like home in a small town. It, you, you don't know these people in this town, but you feel like you do. Yeah. Yeah. You have that same feel no matter where the small town is. I can understand that. Yeah. Um, so obviously, we can see your website again, you have won numerous awards. Now, how does that feel from an artist's point of view to be nominated and then obviously win? Well, it's kind of um, oh, icing on the cake, I would say. And it really kind of pushes me forward again to, mm. and I think that's that's the really neat thing about releasing your music to the world not everybody's gonna like you you got to get no. used to that you know yeah. but the people there's people that find you as you know they're the old saying that the, the tribe and your people will find you so and yeah. to win awards by your peers especially it means a lot right so yeah, yeah it really just makes me more confident because I think everybody as an artistic person you, we all have our days where we go oh what what are we doing what are we doing this for <laughs> you know yeah, yeah I can understand that I can understand that. So you always need that that little bit of encouragement. I mean, you don't do it for the awards, but when you are, when you do win them, it gives you that thing. Oh, you know, I'm doing the right thing here. People do like me, and you know, they like what I'm doing. It's just awesome. Yeah, exactly. I love that. Um, and I have to say, I do love the song "Poor Me," and the video is just fantastic. I really do love that song. It has that. I don't know, it has that older sort of country feel, do you know what I mean? Not like the newer stuff that's out now, it gives you that sort of the older sort of, I mean, I'm a huge sort of Reba McIntyre fan, so I love the music from that era, you know, Terry Clark, Patty Loveless, you know, it kind of gives me that feel from that time, which is just, it's really nice to have that back again, you know. So yeah, I love it. Yeah, I, mean, okay. I would say when I, when I when I describe my music, it's probably a, a more traditional country. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, as I said, that's what I grew up on. My mum was a big Patsy Cline fan, so we always had that around the house, Lynn Anderson. So you always had that play, and then of course I just moved on to Reba and, and be that way. So, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's fantastic. So, we have a fun section of 13 Crazy Questions. Look, that kind of talk. 13 Crazy Questions. Are you ready to take the challenge? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> These are good. They're fun. We get to know you as a person. This is good. I'm good. So, first question: What is your favorite type of transport? Favorite type of transport to so get from A to B. What's your, what's your favorite way of doing it? Well, I really don't like driving, so I would just have to say walking. <laughs> That's quite cool. I love that. <laughs> and you get fit at the same time. There you go. See. <laughs> okay, if you're having a bad day, what's your feel good TV show or film that you go to? Oh, I don't really have any TV shows I watch too much, but I watch a lot of art technique videos. So that okay. would be it. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Okay, if you could write with anyone dead or alive, who would it be? Oh, probably Dolly Parton. I love Dolly. I was never had to say I was never a huge fan of hers, but then my my not my co-host is a big fan, so I started getting into her music. And the more I got to know about her, it's just like you know, she's absolutely an amazing human being. So uh, she is. She cool. is. Um, okay, if your life was a reality show, what would you call it? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Up for the challenge. Oh, that's a great one. Up for the challenge. I love that. Okay, so if I came to you and said I have a dead body in my trunk, would you have do you know a good place to hide it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's yes. We're not going any further. It's a yes. <laughs> I watch a lot of crime shows. I will say that. Oh, I love them. I love them. I must admit, we saw this great TV show the other day, and they managed to kill somebody with an icicle. And if it wasn't for a handprint on a the tree, they would never have found the murderer. I was like, 
<laughs> why am I killing someone? <laughs> and I should all kill him with that. We just don't touch anything around here, leave fingerprints. Um, <laughs> um, okay. So, which artist would you love to do a duet with? You cut out there. I couldn't hear it much. Oh, which artist would you love to do a duet with? Oh, um, oh gosh, um, Tanny Tucker. Oh, that's awesome. She's amazing. Um, okay, perfect. Tanny Tucker, that's pretty cool. Okay, do you listen in, Tanya? <laughs> um, what do you do to help yourself relax apart from music? So move away from the music field. What would you do to help you relax and just? Um, probably it's not music, but my art. I I really I get into a whole other zone with my art and just you know, it's it's very relaxing. Perfect. We'll have to see some of that. Sure. You can see in the spaces. We can put it on our website. That'd be very cool. <laughs> Um, if you owned a bar, what do you call it? A uh, bar. Um, last stop bar and grill. I have no idea. It's quite good actually. Last stop bar and grill. That is very cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is very cool. I love that. Some of the names people come up for bars, I'm like, they've been really thinking about this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people seem to have these really, really cool names. I love it. Um, okay. What scares you the most? Getting older. Yeah. Age is just a terrible thing. It's, it's amazing how much it creeps up on you. Before you know it, it's like, Years just disappear. My parents always said to me, The older you get, the quicker time goes. And I was like, Nah. And before you know it, years just sort of disappear. Yeah, I know. I, I and I never believed that either. But no, I, I just in May I turned 60. Never. My God. If I look as good as you at 60, I'd be happy. I tell you, I would be I'm very happy about <laughs> well, that one. My, my mother always said it's better, you know. I'd, I'd say happy birthday, Mom, and she'd say, "Well, it's better than the alternative." So you know what? We do have to be thankful. Oh yes, definitely. It's different to have a happy birthday than you know anything else. Definitely, we've done that one. Um, okay, if you were an animal, what would you be? A cat. I think I was one before. <laughs> <laughs> would that be a wild cat, or would you be a domesticated? I would be I would be domestic because I, I love looking out the window <laughs> and, and looking at people. <laughs> You're a people watch. I love people watching. I love Some people. Some people watching. want to call it being nosy, but no, it's people watching. It's people watching. You learn so much about people. You just sit there and watch them walk past. <laughs> well, that's, that's as a songwriter, you have to observe people. Definitely, definitely. See, that's perfect. Um, okay. What is your guilty pleasure food? Chocolate, hands down. Do you have a specific chocolate you like? Um, well, I should say dark cho chocolate, but it probably isn't because that's that's healthy. <laughs> that is, it's supposed to be healthy. It's supposed to be healthy, yeah. Uh, I must admit, I eat dark chocolate, but then I do eat a lot of... Actually, I've started eating sugar-free chocolate. I get a bit healthier, so... Kind of makes me feel a bit more, <laughs> a bit better about myself. I'm like, it's sugar free, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's just fine. Um, okay. If you were trapped on a desert island, what three things would you take with you? My guitar. Um, gosh. What else? Well, the guitar came out fast, and I can't think of anything else. <laughs> That's funny. I love that. I love that. I don't know. I can't think of anything else. Okay. I have to come back to that one. Right, come back oh, yeah. to <laughs> Okay. Um, let's have a look. What's your favorite sporting event? Sporting event. Um... 
Just to watch it or whatever you mean? Yeah, just to watch on TV or? Hockey. Probably hockey. Hockey. Uh, Canadian, I guess, yeah. Ice hockey is a big, big thing, isn't it? So, yeah. Um, what was the first concert you ever went to? Rolling Stones when I was 15. Wow. Rolling Stones. That was really awesome. At 15 as well. Amazing. Amazing. Okay. That was supposed to be their last concert. <laughs> yeah, that didn't quite happen, did it? <laughs> no. no, I think it was 79. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Okay, so your final question. What was your first job? Being in a rock band. Beer. See, what a great first job. Most of say like paper rounds or stuff. <laughs> I love that, being in a rock band. That is very cool. Well done. You survived our 13 crazy questions. I love that. Um, tell us, who are some of, the, some of the women you've looked up to? So who are some of your heroes, your musical heroes? Well, we already mentioned Dolly. Um, yeah. And this, is, and this is kind of like you said, you weren't always a fan of hers. And I didn't really think about her too much either. But as the older, as, as I get older, I look up to her because she's still yeah. going. She's still writing. She's reinventing she's herself. Cher, mm -hmm. same thing. Cher's still going and, and performing. Um, and a name you mentioned that your mother loved. Um, she was probably one of the first female singers was Patsy Cline. Because my mom and dad loved, it was called country and Western back then. Yeah. And they had a record player, they would party and they would put the record on and they would have dance, you know, dance in the kitchen. And when I heard Patsy Cline, when I was just a little girl, I was blown away yeah. by yeah. the emotion in her voice. Mm -hmm. And so I would say she was the, the first person I heard that I went, I want to do what she's doing. Yeah. Yeah, she was just you know, I just mm. yeah, even, you know, I it's, it's just so sad, and it, it, I mean, there's been so many young artists that pass away, and you just think of all the music that they would have created. Oh, Could you imagine how huge and what an impact she would have made on that on, on the music industry? She was just absolutely awesome. She, she really was, and you know. It's a tragedy to lose her lose at such a young age, but um, yeah. You know, and I, and I really like some of the up and coming. I mean, uh, I really like Lainey Wilson, and I mm -hmm. love her story uh, because again, it's just it's pure determination. She yeah. what she lived in her little trailer for fourteen years, years and now mm -hmm. just bars, and and then finally somebody noticed her, you know, and it's because I think as musicians we you don't do it to be to be famous most of us don't anyway but um you just keep keep trying because you love what you do yeah you love the music you love everything else if you get the rest of it obviously that's a huge impact but um you, you listen to some of the stories and what people go through just to be to be noticed and to be able to play their music you know some of the stories are just like, you know, a lot of normal people, I'm not saying normal people, a lot majority of people would have given up because, you know, oh, the amount oh, of work sure. and the amount of pressure and, you know, the comments and, you know, people not believing you and stuff. It's going to be hard. It's not. It's yeah. definitely not an easy path to take. No, and, and I don't think being really famous, you know, like Taylor Swift famous or Shania, is funny you can't do anything like I mean yeah. there's you're almost like in a cage so I think there's different levels of it <laughs> yeah 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 it, it's going to be difficult you you know you want your music out there but you still need that part that you can still live your life without being so famous that you can barely walk out of your house and you know you've got everybody there who wants to see you type of thing it's going to be very very difficult you know you can't imagine what is the press of these people are, you know some of these people are under and especially obviously Taylor Swift is so young and she's, she just seems to hand it like it's an everyday occurrence. Me, I'd be having a heart attack. <laughs> With oh, all I know. Like, ah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, that would probably be one of my worst nightmares. <laughs> yes. Um, but, um, but, you know, there we go. Um, so I have to ask you, tell me about your name. How did the Marie part come in? Well, when I first um, started releasing my music, um, 
I well, and my YouTube channel that I started was under Sharon White. And that is the same name as Ricky Skaggs wife, who is also a singer songwriter. Ah, okay. So, um, and my middle name is Marie, and I was named after an auntie that that my that my mom, like her sister, just you know she she loved her, and so I I thought as a homage to my auntie and to try to have di- differentiation from Sharon White. Yeah. However, my YouTube channel still comes up with all her stats. Oh, okay, <laughs> I wish I, that would be okay if I got her royalties, but I do not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that that kind of you know that's, that's a bit of a bummer. Isn't it? <laughs> that is a bit of a nightmare. That is a bit of a. It'd be good to get her royalties at least, you know. <laughs> ah. We'll be seeing it all coming through. Um, so tell us, what does the rest of twenty twenty four have in store for you? Well, because I haven't released any new music since last August, which is. Well, probably the longest. I mean, that's almost a year for me. But mm-hmm. I've kind of been, I feel like I've been saving these songs up because so I've I've got six new songs to work on. Okay. So as soon as, you know, our, our work this summer kind of, you know, slows down, we'll, we have our own yeah. little recording studio um, oh, okay. in our house right, where I, I do the, the vocals. But um, so I have six songs. I need to get my butt in gear. I'm really excited about them because I have a country blues. I have bluegrass, country rock to, you know, to get out. Because I, I love yeah. writing different styles of music. Um, yeah. And I think that's, that's kind of fun as well. And I also have two amazing different groups in Nashville that play my music. Like I'll send okay. just... My, my vocals and guitar track to these two separate bands. They do their magic. And they send the tracks back to me and I put the vocals on. And, and so that's been working just amazingly well for the last four years. And I'm, I'm really excited because this is like, these guys are top level Nashville. So I was like, yeah, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. You gotta love it. That's really it. I must admit, I was re- I once again reading through your website. Um, and it says you taught yourself to play the um, guitar at the age of four. Now, at the age of four, I probably wouldn't have had the patience to do that. But tell us about that journey. I mean, that must have been something, you, you know, you really set your heart on and you're going to do it. And, you know. Uh, what's that, learning the guitar, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Because it says you started to learn the guitar at the age of four. Is that correct? Uh, 14. Oh, four, that's it, 14, sorry, four. I get my numbers right. Sorry, I apologise. Yeah, at the age of 14. I mean, even at 14, I don't think I would have had the patience oh, no, to sit okay. there and do it. <laughs> so what, what, well, what drove you to do it? What it was, because, uh, well, because I love to sing. And so the next step for me, I felt, was learning an instrument to accompany myself. Um, so one of my teachers in, in high school taught guitar and that's, that's kind of not where the whole thing started. He taught three or four other kids and then we became a band, became a rock band. And that's why I said we played every weekend. Um, and I just, uh, yeah, I just, I really wanted to be able to accompany myself because I, because I love to sing and I wrote poetry first. So then when I pl- get I, I had a heck of a time writing rock and roll songs, though. So, you know, in the 90s, I switched to country music. And then that just felt like, ah, this is home. I yeah. I can write stories about this. This this makes mm. sense to me, you know. And, and, and it's funny because, I mean, rock and roll is still the same chords and everything else. But it's just a different way of how you present the, the song or yeah. the song ideas. And, yes, yeah, so country just felt like, yeah, this is where I should be. That's where, yeah, yeah, kind of makes sense. It's a, a place of, you know, of uh, safety, and you know, you know that sort of feel, and you know what it's all about. It's so cool. I love that. I love that. I mean, country music also feels at home to me. Whenever you're having a bad day, you know, I mean, I listen to obviously a lot, a lot of different music, but when you're ever having that bad day, you always go back to what you know. You always go back to certain songs or certain artists that will just cheer you up or make you smile or 
if you need a cry, you can always find that perfect song, <laughs> which is just, um, which is just uh, yes. you know, the per- perfect genre for doing that with. Um, but uh, there you go. So do you have a rough time on when the new album might be out or EP? Um, I'm, I don't know if I'll get it. I'm hoping to get something released before the end of 2024, but if not, it'll probably be the beginning of 2025. And, and I think I'm going to have to release a few, you know, like a lot quicker, maybe every three months just to get these songs out because it it is important to stay current. Um, a lot of internet radio stations, you know, they only play the top 20, the top 30, just like the mainstream ones do. They want, they want your newest stuff. You know, which yeah. which is exciting and it's fun, but um, not everybody, you know, c- can either afford or has the time to to keep, you know, releasing yeah. them so quickly. But there's a lot of stations, especially in Europe, that will keep playing me, even though my, you know, though now that I, I guess my whole goal is to build up a catalog of, yeah. of music, you know, yeah. and, and my ultimate goal would be to have somebody, you know, famous record them. But whether that'll ever happen in my lifetime, I don't know. But Building a catalog right now is what I'm working on. Is what you're working towards. That's awesome. That's awesome. I think yeah, you need that back catalog, don't you, so you can play the songs and you've got you know you've got more there for people to hear and everything else. Yeah, because then um, they can. Oh, I have a few stations and they'll play me every weekend. Um, they have a Sunday show and you know now they have at least nine, well eight songs I guess to pick from. You know, and they yeah, get it up, which is kind of cool. It must be amazing to hear yourself on the radio. I mean, I've seen videos of people hearing it, you know, hearing their song for the first time, but I can't imagine that ever gets old. Hearing yourself on the radio. Sorry, you broke up there again on me. It's all right, don't mind. Don't um, I, um, oh. I was just saying hearing yourself in the radio I mean you've seen videos of people hearing it for the first time but I can't imagine that ever gets old it must be just the same thrill every time you hear a song <laughs> yeah it's it, it's it's really cool and you know when I first started this journey and I contacted the DJs myself mm-hmm. um and you you kind of you know, build this rapport with them, which is really neat. And so I bought a, you know, I've got a li- whole list. So every time I release a song, I usually do it myself. I sometimes hire promoters, but it gets expensive. And then yeah. you don't have, you know, you don't have the dialogue with with the uh, with the DJs. And in the very beginning, it was funny because somebody would say, well, okay, I'm going to be playing you this time, this day. And I would listen to this, you know, and get all excited. And it was and now, and this is a good problem to have, I can't keep up with all the stations that are playing me. Like, I wouldn't have time to, but that's a wonderful problem. And that's kind of where you want to get yeah. to, you know. But you still, if they tag you, you know, if they tag me on Facebook and say I'm playing you, I'll share it and I'll thank them because it's that's yeah. still very important. Yeah. You still need to keep that rapport going. You still need to be able to, you know, give it out to huh. people and, uh, you know, it's a mutual respect between you and the radio stations because Absolutely. you need them and they need you. So, exactly. you know, you and, need to keep and that. trying to get on terrestrial or mainstream in Canada is um, extremely difficult because most of our radio stations are big conglomerates. They're, they're you know, and the people that decide the program directors may be in a totally different province. And they're basically told what what, what music to play. Uh, there, yeah. There's no room for, you know, an independent unless you're, you know, if you're not with a record label, yeah. it's really dark. Yeah, the record labels win because they can pay the money. They can, you know, they can help with the promotion and everything oh, yeah. else where, you know, um, it's once again, it's, you know, how much money you can put into it and that sort of stuff, you know. But, um, yeah. Which is difficult, but, uh, you know, we need more radio stations that are out there to play independent artists and save the world, you know. Yeah, and there's, I mean, there's thousands of them. So, I mean, and they come and they go because I know it's, it's, it is it is hard financially for um, somebody just to start one. And, you know, especially if they want to um, have it licensed, you know, because if it's yeah. licensed and that's why we have to tag all our music and everything, then we will get, you know, our little chunk of change, you know, from our royalties. So it's, yeah. it's something. 
yeah, licensed innovators go, I must admit. But, um, you know, it's good that we have got the radio stations out there that are willing to play the new artists and willing to play independent artists, you know. Um, but um, that's very cool. Um, so what have you got planned for the rest of your day? Rest of my day? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what have you got planned for the rest of your day? Oh, just finish up my work and that's that's about it. <laughs> Perfect. You can just chill for the rest of the day and that'll be it. Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds good. Well, I have had a blast talking to you. I really have. And I've had a you know, a real fun getting to know you and uh, getting to know your music. So any new music you've got, send it our way. We would love to promote to help promote it for you. So uh That'd be awesome. But uh, thank oh, you I so much. For... That. That's... No worries. Thank no worries. you, thank Paul. You. I really appreciate it. <laughs> anytime, anytime. And I've had fun <laughs> talking to you. So uh, it's been there. Uh, it's been fun. So uh, have a great evening or oh, much of your day. Um, and uh, we yes, look you... forward to hearing new music. That sounds great. And you take care. Perfect. Will do. See you later, guys. Have fun. Thank Adios. You. Bye. If you enjoyed today's episode of Crazy Women Country, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Be sure to click the subscribe button for new interviews weekly. And thank you, friends, for joining us today on Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter.